What is going on, crypto family? This is your boy Random Arts coming with a quick video. And on this video, guys, we're going to be talking about Shibarium bridging, guys, bridging to Shibarium. So there was an article that was written today by Sheeb the magazine, um, which I thought was very, very interesting. And also being the fact that this was a question that I've been asked uh, so many times. Also, a topic of discussion within the Telegram is when is Roaring Kitty going to get onto Shibarium? So bringing these two topics together is definitely, um, you know, was on my to do list. So today just fits perfectly as far as what topics I need to talk about. So this is the type of video that I'm bringing to you guys today. So before I get into it, though, do me a huge favor. Just hit that like button. Don't cost you nothing. Click the like button, share it. Leave a comment, and I'd definitely love to hear you guys' thoughts and opinion about Shibarium bridging. And one thing that you guys have to realize, when it comes to bridging, it is very, very complex um, work. It's not a simple task as far as just creating an NFT contract. Like, I'm not tech savvy. I'm not a dev by any means, <laughs> necessary, but I was able to build a NFT contract. You know, so that just showing you the the... the the compare and contrast as far as like uh, building an NFT co uh, contract, how easy it is versus trying to map out within a blockchain um, bridging like that is complex. And a lot of time it does need the, uh, the team involved to be able to map it out. Um, so this is where we're at when it comes to Roaring Kitty. Again, a lot of people ask like, hey, Random Arts, when are when are we going to get on Sumeria? When are we gonna, like? Truth of the matter is, at this point, don't know because I'm not a dev and the people that are working on it, hey, they're, you know, they're working on it, you know, so I don't know what time frame to be expected. You know, one, you know, I was expecting one thing. I heard they gave me one thing and now it's like, you know, we got to get a couple of things together, but not all is doom and gloom. Because uh, with this article that I just read today, it is another glimmer of hope as far as to being able to get us onto Shibarium. Um, not guaranteed, but this would this could be a door that's being opened while you know Wix um, figure out you know figure out the bridging. So it all started with this, especially especially the reason why I'm making this video. Um, I've seen our X account. Um, suggested a partnership with uh, Ho Chi Token and Shibarium. Um, and I'm assuming they, you know, since they help us get on Shibarium, uh, try, I'm, I'm assuming this post was related to trying to appeal to Ho Chi to select Roaring Kitty as one of the tokens to be able to be bridgeable to Shibarium. Now, one thing that you got to understand, if you, you know, guys just hearing me talk about Roaring Kitty and don't really understand the full scope behind it, when it comes to Roaring Kitty, about 99% of the people that's invested into Roaring Kitty are within the Sheep um, ecosystem. You know, they have either Bone, Leash, K9. Um, I mean, K9 is not a part of the ecosystem, but but the Sheep Bone, like they at least have one of those. Sheep Bone, Leash. And it only makes sense because if Roaring Kitty is controlled, because again, the token is not my token. It's nobody's token. It is just a decentralized token where everybody who owns, you know, who buys in is an owner of the token. Um, I'm just the one who just have a YouTube platform that's able to talk about it, but everybody else are doing their own thing for this token to be able to make it, you know, what it is today. Um, so, yeah. So if 99 percent of the people who owns it are within sheep, you know, within the sheep ecosystem, of course, they want this token to be onto Shibarium because at the end of the day, it's going to help out bone because the more liquidity that Roaring Kitty gets onto Shibarium, that's going to be more uh, less bone that's going to be on the open market. And this is going to also cause buying, you know, driving up uh, uh or lowering the supply while we'll see buying demand. Um, and Roaring Kitty for the past, what, couple of months have been buying bone just for its liquidity once we get onto Shibarium. So the thing is, it's in the works. It just taking a little bit longer than what we all anticipate, especially with the launch of Canine Finance uh, liquid staking. 
I know a lot of people are getting antsy because, yeah, seeing a canine bone with Roy and Kitty as far as within your liquidity pool, that is definitely the move because some of the bone that I have, I would stake it away and just to buy more Roy and Kitty, you know, and to be able to get double, uh, double the price action once uh, Roy and Kitty starts the moon. And I think a lot of people are seeing the same strategy just to be able to do it as well, too. So because with K9, they launch they liquid staking on the 18th. So that's a few days away, seven days away. So a lot of people want to see that happen as far as with the bridge. So this is the article right here for Horchi. I'm not going to read everything to you, but I am going to uh, hit key parts as far as with this article guys which i think is they're solving a problem that we clearly are having so imagine with how many other crypto projects that may be facing the same type of pro uh, problem uh, may not have a dev uh don't have the capability of getting to another chain but they would like to move to another chain because there's so many ctos that's out there right now which is just telling you guys like how the overall market is because a lot of devs are just uh, building projects and just you know once they dump they leave and they leave it up to the community now luckily for us um, our dev who created uh the Roy and kitty contract uh they left way back in 20 uh, 2022 so they've been left so this was just essentially a dead dead token until the sheep army took over the uh took over the token and now it's not a you know a dead token anymore but few key points that i thought was pretty impressive is the fact that they're going to be opening it up to not only just the shibarium but also going to be able to pave a way to be on solana um tron ton and shibarium and also evm and non-evm chains as well too guys so this is opening up the window for pretty much to try to get everything connected and not a lot of projects are tackling onto the bridge, like tackling this bridge issue that is within uh, crypto, you know? So with them opening it up, to me, it is going to drive up the demand of their crypto as the bull market, once capital start to come in, if someone wants to get to another chain real fast, real quick, boom, they're going to be able to do that. And if they market themselves correctly, then I believe they're going to be one of the uh, premier tokens to be on the lookout for uh, mark cap only 604,000 guys this is a micro micro token micro token so with it being a micro token once volume really kicks in this thing is going to skyrocket and this is a token that uh you know that i currently hold and i'm going to continue to keep buying until i get a sufficient uh bag size on this you know but a partnership with Roy and Kitty, I think it it could be good for both because at the end of the day, we are Roy and Kitty is essentially Shiba Eat the Sheep Army. It's just the people that's in it, you know. And if we're able to get onto Shibarium, it is gonna help out bone because the bone that we've been accumulating, this is gonna be bone that's taken out of circulating supply, and not only that. Our liquidity is going to get burnt as well, too. So these bones uh, that's going to be in the LP, uh, they're essentially just going to get locked away into Shibarium. Um, so, yeah. Now, one impressive, one other impressive thing that I've seen as far as for security, because like I mentioned before, a lot of the hacks that's done is typically done within bridging. So what they did, um, which I never heard anybody do this before, but they, um, with their private key, they put it into small fragments and they distributed them across different nodes. So in order for a transaction to go to be authorized, they need 66% to get approved of it. So let's say if a hacker only um, was able to hack one of the nodes, they only got one piece of the uh, information, but the attack that they're trying to do is going to end up become useless so it's not going to allow it to happen and they also are going to focus when it comes to security um they let me find it right here uh they mentioned you know they, they talked about they're only as far as what project they're looking for this is only project that have undergone uh, rigorous audits and validation are granted access now with us with roaring kitty 
um, our contract, it is renounced. Um, everything is open. So whatever they need to find, if they do choose us to be one of the uh, tokens that could use their bridge, um, yeah, our contract is right here. They could certainly file through it, see what's what it is. Um, it's not owned by anyone. It's all, you know, the contract's not owned by anyone. We're just holders within this crypto uh, looking to try to get onto Shibarium. But hopefully, guys, this all made sense to you guys as far as to answering the question of why Roaring Kitty is not yet onto Shibarium. Because at the end of the day, guys, uh, we have no devs uh, on, on Roaring Kitty. So nothing could be done without the aid of other communities. So, but let me know in the comment down below your thoughts, your opinion about all this. Random Bart signing off. Peace.